Hey everyone, welcome back to Motion UX. Today we're gonna dive into easing and why it is so fundamentally important for UX motion design. Let's dive in. So easing, you can see that these are a bunch of different types of easings that you typically find out there in the world. And what easing is, it's literally the rate of speed at which something moves. And so typically when there's no easing, everything's move at a linear speed. And so from start to stop, things are moving at the exact same speed. There's no uh, slowing down or speeding up or acceleration and deceleration. And so what easing does, easing mimics things that we see in nature, right? Everything natural around us that is moving has some sort of easing related to it. Nothing immediately is moving fast and immediately is stopping. There is always an acceleration and a deceleration. And so in easing, what we call that is easing in and easing out um, and some combination of those things. But as you can see from this, there are many different types of easings, but I really wanna demystify and simplify that um, specifically for UX motion design. And with UX motion design, there are three main types of easings. So if you take a look here, we have ease out, ease in and out, and then ease in. And by default, those naming conventions of ease out and ease in are not really helpful in understanding when and how are we supposed to use each one of these easings. So to make it easier to understand, typically I describe this ease out easing as an enter easing. So things are starting fast and then they're slowing down. Talking again about the UX motion design context, when things are moving from off screen onto screen, things are coming in at the fastest that they possibly will and they're slowing down to their final resting place. Easy way to think about that. Opposing that is the ease in, which is also called exit easing because it starts very, very, very slow and it speeds up at the very end. And so that's really helpful for when we have objects on screen that we are actually removing from the screen. So it's just coming, it's already there and it's speeding up and then leaving. So you can think about exit easing just as that is when things are exiting the screen. So it's already present on screen. And if we were to use an enter easing in this context, it would be very abrupt. The change would be very fast and then you wouldn't even see the slow stuff because that would be off of screen. And so to kind of give our eyes a little bit of anticipation and a little bit of a heads up about what's going to happen, things start from very slow and they accelerate to the fastest as they exit the screen. And then here in the middle, we have the ease in and ease out where it starts off very slow, very fast in the middle, and then it's slow at the end. And this is really helpful for when we're moving things that are already present on screen. Say like we have a little thumbnail, we tap on it and it scales up to fill the entire screen. It's gonna start slow, move really, really fast, and then end very slow. And the easing really gives us that anticipation when it's moving a little bit slow before it gets fast. It gives us an anticipation to understand where am I supposed to focus on next, what's about to happen, and all of those sorts of things. So let's actually put this easing into action. And so what we're gonna do here is we have this simple dashboard here where we're going to animate on this, these little tiles here. Um, we are going to show this menu coming up and exiting and then also removing all the tiles from the screen. So you can see what context these easings really fit into in a real world application. All right, so to set up this prototype, we're going to do everything right here in Figma. What we're going to do is we're gonna start with the fully built screen and we're just gonna work our way back from there. And so on this one, we are going to, uh, if we click and drag, hold shift and spacebar, we can actually drag this completely off screen while keeping it in frame. And if we duplicate that, we're gonna select this one, hold shift, spacebar, and drag that completely off screen. And so you can see this is kind of like a frame by frame what is going to happen. So we're gonna have nothing. This first one's gonna come in, then the second one's gonna come in. Then if we click on the menu, this menu's gonna come in. And then what we wanna happen after that is it's gonna go back to this. Let's say if we click that, then we're basically gonna be going all the way back to the beginning. So let's actually set up this auto animate easing. So we're just gonna do it on click so that we can have a little bit more control over the preview. Typically, if this was really like a dashboard experience that we were trying to test, we would probably use a delay just so that all of that would happen on its own. But for this example, we're just gonna do on click. And on click, we're gonna do a smart animate. And you can see that these ease in, these ease out, all of these eases are built into Figma already with the addition of the new spring animations. So you could very well just use these default easings of ease in, ease out, ease in and out in this manner to make things really, really simple. I like to go ahead and do a custom Bezier here. And what's happening in this first frame is that we're actually 
putting things on the screen. So we're gonna use our enter easing. And if I take this Bezier handle, move it all the way up, take this other handle, move it all the way over here, we have a really aggressive enter easing. And we're just gonna see how that feels. And we're gonna just exaggerate this a little bit and do it over 400 milliseconds. And once we've set up that prototype interaction once, if we do that same interaction again, all the settings will then be carried over to every single interaction that we put in this prototype. And so it helps us speed up this process a good bit. The enter easing here, enter easing here. Now we have both of the things on screen. What we actually wanna do here is that we wanna have some standard easing with this little dashboard here. So we want these things to kind of like animate up and down. And that will be a good use for our standard easing. So if we go ahead and we select these, um, I'll just change the scale slightly on these. So then if we go ahead and we click this thing, we're gonna change this to from an enter easing to actually more of a standard easing, ease in, ease out. And this, you can really have a lot of flexibility on. Maybe you're working in a design system where there's preset easings um, and you can just use those, or you can kind of figure out what is the right feel for your app. Is it very kind of like slow and methodical? Is it really snappy and fast? Does it have a little bit of overshoot? Um, all of those sorts of things are things to consider when deciding on easings. What's important with this is to stick with the same enter easing across the entire uh, experience, the same exit, the same standard easing across everything. So things start to feel really consistent throughout. So with the menu, we will actually do an open overlay. So let's go ahead and make this into a frame. And we can just name this menu or my capital M doesn't work, so menu. And when we select that, we can say on click open overlay. And we'll just say that overlay is top left and we can set a move in animation. We can set it to do a move in so it goes from left all the way to right. And we can select our custom easing, which we want it to be this right here where it's the nice enter easing. But then when we do the X, we want this to be a close overlay and we'll see what that does there and from here if we go ahead and we click the whole thing we'll just trigger the exit easing for everything else and so we already have that in place so we'll say exit easing and exit easing let's go ahead and preview our flow and see what it looks like so we have that really nice enter easing and here we have that standard easing so it starts off a little bit slow and it goes a little bit faster at the end Let's preview that again. That feels really nice. Opposed to how this comes on very, very quickly. So this is a little bit of a limitation with Figma here. Because we cannot select a custom easing for our close overlay, it actually uses the enter easing to exit it. And so you can see that it's a little bit quick right in the beginning and then it slows down right at the end where the reverse of that would actually be better. And so the way that we would actually have to animate that is to have an actual screen for it animating in just like we did the tiles here. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. So if we go back here, we can see an exit easing as we're clicking and removing things from the screen. And you can see it starts off very slow and it ends very, very fast. And so that gives us a bit of anticipation of it's not happening all of a sudden or abruptly, but it's bringing my attention there, giving me enough time to see it and see it exit the screen. And so it really orients me uh, to what is happening on screen. And that's it, everyone. Easing basics for UX motion design. Hopefully understanding these categories of enter, exit, and standard easing really helps you bring more consistency to the motion in your experiences. Catch y'all next time. <laughs>